Right here. This is the end of the fight. He should oh. be. He should just curb stomp him. Don't pick up the sword. Don't even worry Dude, about it's, it. It's like trying to pick up Mjolnir. Yeah, right? And that guy's... Pass Vizzo's a big guy. Oh! Shake him! Vibroblade. We're going into prison fights now, guys. That's what it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just He's tossed just him. him. Oh. Another shake! Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. Oh, this guy's your ACL friend. Out. He's oh going to kill him. Just, That's it. Killed him. Oh, my God. Guys, we are not fighting over the Darksaber. We just nope, want to talk today. about it. Chris and Rob here, other Jersey Comic Crew, welcome back to another episode. Hope you guys are doing well. And, of course, we are doing our reaction or review to Book of Boba Fett, yeah. Episode 5, a.k.a. Mandalorian Season 2.5, <laughs> Episode 0. Uh, and it was a great episode, Rob. For me personally, best episode of the season from start to finish. I thought it flowed well. I didn't okay. realize how much I missed Mando until I saw him again. What did you think? I, I agree. Like, you forget how much you miss Mando until you see it because he does great. Like, he wins fights, but it's always, like, close and it's, like, relatable. Like, you could believe. It's more believable than some of the other things in Star Wars. I don't think this was the best episode of Book of, Be uh, Book of Boba Fett show for me. Uh, we didn't have Boba Fett. It was just, like, a catch-up episode with Mando to see what he's doing. Uh, but it was still very enjoyable to see. The one thing I wanted to talk about in this episode, and one thing I really loved, yeah. was the the comparison that the show did with the emotional struggle that Mando is going with, the emotional weight versus the physical weight th that was shown. Right, he's missing his child. Right, he's separated. Like it's separation anxiety. He's a dad yeah. who's not with his kid. He's still worried about him, and we know his mind's not right. The armor even says the dark saber senses when your mind's not right. Like Mando needs to get his mind right and needs to be okay with himself in order to use the sword properly and then when you have that fight with pal Vizsla, you can see the weight of the sword how much that weight essentially this thing that weighs nothing because it's made out of light is shown because he's not okay he needs to go see his kid essentially he needs to go make himself whole again you know with the whole mandalorian being destroyed his son's not there the craziness that's going on in the universe there's a lot to weigh on mando it is, and and part of that too, like you saying, the separation anxiety. I think it's the unknown, right? It's like, all right, I gave, I, I finished my task, and he says that to the armor, right? Like, yes, I finished my task. I got him back to his own kind, but he's also, you know, doesn't really know what's going on with him, right? You you don't really know this person who everyone else knows as the audience, and where are they? What are they doing? Is he treating him well? Kind of thing. You don't know what Jedi training is. Like, it's just kind of the unknown. I think that's weighing on him, and yeah. I think he just needs to see him. And know that he's okay, and that's also why he kind of has the armor make like it looks like this little chainmail suit. For I him. think so, yeah. And uh, which I love that you wrapped it up and it looked like Grogu's head. I mean, it just reminds me of all the fan art that we see of like uh, Grogu in Mandalorian armor, like running around with Mando, and I'm like, that's what I want to see. I hope he shows up and he's just like sipping soup, like <laughs> he wasn't before. But like, yeah, like obviously that's kind of weighing on him and we're seeing this emotional side of him in a cold character whose face you don't see, yeah. which is I think a brilliant move too. But Rob, going from what you were saying, I loved the middle crux of this episode with the armor and the Mandalorians all in the same area. They're kind of like hidden underneath this halo ring. I was waiting for Master Chief to show up. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, they're underneath, they're still kind of in hiding. There's only so many left and the armor gives uber star wars nerds like me an absolute fan service where she's talking oh, about okay. the night of a thousand tears and we actually see it we see the flashback of the empire destroying mandalore i didn't think we'd see that live action cities. i didn't either and and all this stuff we see like the k2so droids like killing whoever's left and you know all these droids that we see like during the, the, the republic era so i love that scene i also loved her talking about the prophecy stuff with like the mythosaur oh i don't know if cool. you noticed but when you know mando had his red radar stuff to find them okay there was a mythosaur above the logo of the yeah what was that down. so that is a mythical being of legend and she used the word legend the right way because it's kind of in the legends of star wars now oh, guys okay. when when disney bought out star wars all the old canon became legends so she like literally the books and stuff the word like the books, like the comics. Okay. Um, but that is something that in the old 70s Christmas special, Boba Fett rides a mythical mythosaur. That's why his logo is that oh. elephant tusk type thing. Okay. And we see it again when she opens up that case to smelt down the Beskar spear. So there's lore that that could be a big thing later oh, on with Mando. In the finale and Boba of Mando. Fett. I like that. And, and Boba Fett, could Boba Fett be the rightful heir to Mandalore? Who knows? But... 
that aspect. And then the last part I thought was great was he asked about Bo-Katan. Yeah, she threw mad shade at Bo-Katan. I was like, oh my God, calm well, down. I, I also think rightfully so, I mean, because maybe. she talks about Bo-Katan in the sense like, yes, her family was, you know, if anyone's watched Rebels, her family was very important. They were royals on Mandalore. But the way Bo-Katan originally got the Darksaber was it was given to her by Sabine. And the armor says, you know, if it's not won by combat, a curse will befall the land of Mandalore. And that's what happened. She got the dark saber gifted to her, and Mandalore gets destroyed by the Empire. That's so, so crazy that like this is all true, right? Like in my mind, I'm yeah. like these are just some wild people. A sword's a sword, just pick it up and use it. But like you see that he can't pick it up because his mind's not right. And then obviously the the day of a thousand tears, like that's just proof of the curse. I'm like, oh my god, magic is nuts. real. And yeah, and it's nuts because also right, you have this sect of the Mandalorians that are like, you know, she even says it like, have you taken off your helmet? And he hesitates because he did for Grogu at the end of Mandalorian season two. Yeah. And now he has to go, you know, do penance and all that other stuff later on, which I'm guessing is Mandalorian season three. Probably. But that kind of crazy stuff where Bo-Katan's like, yeah, I don't do that. Like, I'm taking my helmet off whenever I want. Some of that is kind of lining up with a couple of other things in their kind of like hardcore religious side of like, yeah, yeah no, she was gifted this and look what happened to our planet. So... I thought that whole aspect, that whole part was fantastic for us. I could kind of see this being like the foundation and groundwork to be in like so Mandalore when it's back in full occupation of running, right? And you can kind of see like a civil war between uh, the regular Mandalorians, which like take off their helmets and put it on, versus like the religious zealots who are like want to yeah. take it down and be the rightful rulers. Like past visits, like I, my family made this uh, dark saber. I should be the rightful heir. So like I can see them laying groundwork. Like once Mandalorians being created, that like we're gonna see warring factions of Mandalorians go back at it, whether in the future of Mandalorian and like the future Star Wars or in this time pocket that we're exploring. Uh, but getting back to the actual book of Boba Fett, the Boba Fett side of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when Mando comes back to Mos Espa and then Pelimoto gets him this new car. It's a, it's a, no, it's not really a car, guys. It's a spaceship. You you know what I meant. And it's like a Starfighter, which is really cool. And it, it was oh, like from the God. the old like prequel trilogy movies. And I was like, oh, is he going to rock out with this? This looks pretty cool. It was so fantastic. I actually, as an Uber Star Wars nerd, teared up a little bit at that moment. Um, when she revealed, I, cause underneath it, I'm like, is it a Y wing bomber? Like, what yeah. is it? And she pulls, you know, the, the proverbial tarp off the sixties Mustang and it's an old Nabooan starfighter. Look great. And I was like, oh, I was so happy. It, great ship. Uh, one of the best spaceship designs, I think in all of star Wars. And then they go through this montage of yes. working it out. And I was like, yo, where's Exhibit? Are we pimping my ride right now? Like, what is happening? I mean, they were. It looks it looks great. The whole silver and it's fast. And it like it relates more to Mando. And you you've mentioned this before. What if like Boba Fett is the new rifle heir to like Mandalorian, right? You said that and like that got my head thinking. Cause Mando is kind of like this like run and gun kind of style of character. He's in and out. He only really cares about himself and maybe somebody else. And you saw that like, they have the little pocket where Grogu's going to be. And then, like, in the future, like, there's going to be a new leader, right? I don't think Mando is the leader type. He does his own thing, helps out everybody. Seeing Boba Fett in this show is like, oh, that's the leader type. He's going to want be the one that had the gunship where other people could go and ride. Mando's going to be in and out, the quick fighter. I think this fits him so much more than that old ship, right? And I think... I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Like you saw how fast it was. It was like oh, hyper speed without going into hyper speed. Like this thing is insane. I I loved it. I love that when he kicks it on, it has like one. It has like a Hemi yeah. on it. It's, <laughs> it's got like an old '60s Hemi on it, yeah. and like a like a supercharger on it, and it sounds like a muscle car. <laughs> like it doesn't even sound like a like a spaceship. It sounds like a legit muscle car, and I loved it. Um. I, I was so excited. Also, during this time, Rob, we see a BD droid that yeah. Pelimoto has, and that is related right to Cal Kestis in the Jedi Fallen Order video game. It's same kind same, of robot. Same type, right? So I'm wondering, I have all these thoughts, but like, that was really cool. I also love the line, but Pelimoto should be in every episode of every. I love her. She's great. I love where she's talking about she used to date a Jawa. Pelimoto for me. <laughs> has been a staple to Star Wars now. She needs to be, like, anytime you're on most Espa or Tatooine, you're dealing with Petty Moto. She needs to be a fixture in this world. Fantastic. Her her garage needs to expand. It needs to be an animated stuff, all this kind of yeah. stuff. 
20 years down the road when we're in the future. It should be <laughs> Pelimoto Jr. Her kid is running this stuff. I love this character. She's fantastic. <laughs> she she dated a Jawa. They're very furry. She has, very to furry. she has to work on herself. She can't date another one. That was so good. Uh, but the Jawas are working for you. You give them a list. They go and grab stuff. Yeah, just give them a list. <laughs> and then he's like, okay. And then he gives them money. He's like, don't spoil them. Like, Pelimoto's <laughs> character, great comic relief. And like, yeah. just adds to the the lore of Tatooine of Mos Espa, like giving it more character, which this show is doing very well. Some she's a local gal. She's yeah, never been on board. She's a local gal. That's what it is. I, I loved it. And I also love uh, when he gets stopped by the two X Wings. And I'm oh, like, uh oh, yeah. what do we got? So we see the, like, general the cops again. pulled him over, man. <laughs> was that was great. Like, like you're speeding, right? Like, sorry, officer. Like, it's a new car. I'm testing it out. You know, uh, so they pull him over. The one X Wing pilot, FYI, guys is the guy who played Luke Skywalker at the end of Mandalorian season two. Oh, he's the he's the body guy, okay. He's the actual actor. Um, and then we see the general again, who was like, hey, you sound like a, you know. Also, it was so coy, right? Like you sound like, what? just look at him. How many Mandalorians are walking around? You <laughs> just look at him. Just look at his helmet. Um, and he's like, you sound like a guy who, you know, had a razor crest. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Boom, I'm out of here. And he kicks yeah. it into gear. That was a great scene. Um, I absolutely loved it. And at the end, Rob, we get Fennec Shan showing up. I, I love the meetup. And he's like, you got you want a job? Uh, Boba, uh, Boba Fett needs some help. And he's like, Boba Fett, it's on the house. Because I was like, that camaraderie. That's what I'm Fantastic. talking about. Mandalorian Fantastic. taking care of Mandalorian's friends, taking care of friends. <laughs> They're going to go beat up some Why people. can't we do this as humans, people? Oh, my <laughs> God. I can't wait for him to slap some pike in the face. I, uh, oh, it's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be great. And, and he says, like, I have to go do something first. And then I will come back and help. So, yeah, what is that? What uh, do you think? obviously, I think it has to do with he's going to go see Grogu. He's going to kind of get his mind right. Um, I have some other thoughts for another episode, guys, that we are going to be doing after this one. Guys, make sure you watch that episode. It is going to have all the thoughts, all the theories and information of how not only Boba Fett could end, but the possibility of Mandalorian Ooh. going forward. So you do not want to miss that episode. But, Rob, focusing on that aspect. Yes. It seems like, you know, obviously Mando has this this mental block he needs to get out of his head. And then he's going to come back and kind of help Boba. Do you think it's going to be one of those where he shows up in that Naboo and Starfighter at the last second and save the day? Or is he going to kind of be there already? Because the thought of him, Boba, Black Kersantan, and Fennec Shand all working together on yeah, the same side, great. I don't know if I have the underwear that could handle that. I actually don't think that, like, He's going to go and see Grogu and do all that kind of other stuff. I think with only two episodes left, right? We have to get moving. Now, like, this attack plan has to start against the Pike. I don't see this whole season one being, hey, I'm making this before I even think about fighting the Pike. It could be, but then it's going to be a real letdown of a show, right? There has to be some climactic moment that we're going to get. And with only two episodes left, I don't think we're going to have the time for him to leave and come back unless... Theoretically, there's a time skip, right? Between this episode now and then the next episode, it's a couple of weeks, right? And then, like, Mando comes back, and then we move forward. And then Mando Season 3 is what happens during that time. I can see that. But realistically, I think it's going to be him getting something for the ship, coming back, helping Mando, uh, helping Boba Fett, and just move forward. And then he's going to see Grogu in Season 3 and do all of that. I could see that too. I, I, I personally think he's going to see Grogu and then the ship is going to have a factor in it. Like they, they oh, spent yeah. like all this time on the ship. I For me, the best scene of the whole episode was him going through Beggar's Canyon and doing the same route that little Anakin did in his pod that race. Was cool. uh, that was absolutely beautiful to me. Um, I think that ship is going to have a big factor in the end of the season, oh, of but I don't want to give too much away because we're going to talk some of this theory stuff in the next episode guys and with that guys that is a review and reaction of the fifth episode of boba fett aka uh mandalorian 2.5 let us know what you think down in the comments below we really enjoyed it we hope you did as well and guys thanks so much for watching give us a thumbs up like it really helps the channel out a lot if you're new subscribe and turn on those notifications you don't miss anything else we're doing on the channel like we said we have a new video coming out very soon it's going to be awesome you do not want to miss it if you missed anything Everything is right here on the channel for you. And as always, I'm Chris Heller. That's Tom Segura. I mean, Rob Moran. <laughs> and we will see you next time.